While most people knew him as 051 Melly, those familiar with his street life called him the grave digger. The Chicago native, whose real name is Yarmel Williams, was killed during a house party in September 2019. While the 27-year-old was not a rapper, he was well known for something else, being a ruthless killer in Chirac. This is the story of Chirac's deadliest killer, how Yarmel Williams caught his first two bodies. Although he died with a reputation for being a dangerous killer, he was not always that way. Most say his environment and those around him turned him into the monster he later became. Born on 19 November 1991 on the south side of Chicago, Melly grew up with two siblings, his sister Kenjay and his brother Wu. He was the eldest among them. Although Wu and Melly had the same mom, Angie B, they had different fathers. Melly did not grow up with his father, Yamor Williams, in his life. Instead, Wu's father, Jerome Golden, was a constant figure in the children's lives. He was among the people suspected of introducing Melly to the gang lifestyle. Golden was a well-respected member of the Black Disciples, and he is currently serving a life sentence for his involvement in four murders and an armed robbery. After the death of Melly's mom at age 40 due to cancer, he moved around a lot with his stepdad. Perhaps this was the turning point in his life. Apart from his stepdad, other people in his life that may have been negatively influenced in his life included his cousins, TYMB Courtney and TYMB Court. The pair were BD members, and they were heavily linked with the death of a 15-year-old rapper and GD member, Tuka. His uncle, Golden's brother, G Slim, was also popular in Melly's life. G Slim was a member of the Never Leave My Brothers gang, NLMB. Melly was raised in Randolph Towers, also known as the Calment Buildings. After the demolition of the towers, Melly's mom and her three kids were forced to move to 59th and Calumet, which was a territory controlled by the 600 gang. Melly's 051 connections began when he attended Ducible High School, where he became friends with young guys associated with the Mickey Cobras. He also befriended and got close to a guy in the 051 crew named 051 Zico. Unfortunately, Zico was shot dead in 2008 by a guy called Aki, a member of the THF crew, the Trigger Happy family. This may have proved too much for Melly. A young teenage boy whose mom died and stepfather was in prison had just lost a friend due to gang rivalry. With no role model and nothing to help him cope with his stress and frustration, Melly gave his life over to gang life. Interestingly, Melly joined 051 even though most of his family members were in BD or BD related gangs. Apart from that, most of the 051 ops were BD related. However, Melly could move this way because he had family ties all over the city. Also, he was just a cool guy. He became part of the 051 crew and the Black Disciples crew. 051 Young Money, the crew Melly joined, is among the most prominent gangs in the south side of Chicago. Notorious for having ruthless killers, the gang controls territory larger than the average gang in Chicago controls. While most gangs often control around two square miles at most, 051 Young Money controls more than three square miles of territory. The gang's main territory extends from King Drive to Woodlawn Ave on 53rd to 48th. It also controls the areas of Hyde Park to Kenwood and Eastern Grand Crossing. Formed around 2006 to 2007, 051 did not waste any time getting into a beef with THF. THF is a large gang found on 45th to 46th, Drexel and Woodlawn. With the experience of older guys who have been in the streets longer, the gang is among the most feared in Chicago. The war between 051 and THF will become the most prominent and bloodiest in Chicago. The beef started when 051 and THF members started beefing in and out of school. Not long after, guns were involved, and it was only a matter of time before someone ended up in a body bag. True to that, a 051 member became the first victim of the war between the two gangs. Carlos Meros, alias Los, was gunned down on the 13th of March 2008 at 4800 South Drexel Boulevard. The 20-year-old was taken to Northwest Memorial Hospital but died after sustaining multiple gunshot wounds. There was no going back now. From here, the war would be bloody, claiming the lives of multiple young men. Although he was doing well in school, Melly was sucked into the streets and soon started going after 051 ops around 2010 to 2011. Around this time, things were heating up between the two rivals. Tension was high, and members from both gangs were out for blood. In 2011, 051 dropped their first two bodies from THF as revenge for the death of Los and Zico in 2008. In 2011, Quint and Tony from THF were shot and killed by Montana from 051. The 600 crew also got into the mix and killed a member of 051. M Thang, a member of 600, shot and killed T Streets, a 051 member. Three months later, 051 retaliated. This was the first murder that was associated with Melly. Melly began his killing spree on the 2nd of February, 2012. He and a guy called Kiddo were out that night looking to avenge their crew member's death. The victim was a 20-year-old 600 member, Shaquille Rush, alias Rush. That fateful day, Shaq and a girl were leaving a party on the 5900 block of South Calumet Avenue. Unfortunately, Melly and Kiddo, who were lurking and sliding through 600's territory, spotted him. Shaq went to pee in an alley when Melly and his accomplice ran up to him and shot him multiple times. 
The girl accompanying Shaq was also hit. Shaq died on the spot after sustaining multiple bullet wounds to his body and head. Fortunately, the girl had only been grazed by the bullet and was rushed to Northwestern Memorial Hospital. Shaq's death was sad, given that his father, Luther Rush, had also been shot and killed in 1998 in a gang-related shooting. While speaking to reporters after the shooting, Shaq's mother had the following to say about her dead son. Shaquille Rush loved spending time with his two brothers and his sister. He also loved to rap and would often write lyrics and mix beats on his computer. He was a very outgoing person, very spirited. He always had a smile on his face. He was never mad and he always made people laugh. To Melly in 051, Shaq was an op who deserved death. To THF, Melly was now their top priority. The funny thing is, when Melly killed Shaq, he lived in a territory controlled by 600. He lived in 5909 South Calumet, which is in the heart of 600 controlled territory. He even constantly mocked 600 members on Twitter regarding this. He even messaged Manny, a 600 member, that he lived in their territory and that he passed through their area daily with no worry. The young 051 member had balls of steel. It is important to remember that Melly had heavy BD connections throughout his family. Therefore, he was well protected. Despite this, 600 put him as a priority target. However, they never managed to get him off guard. Apart from taunting his ops on social media, he subtly confessed to killing Shaq. While arguing with the 600 member on Twitter, Melly said, Shaq was laying next to that garbage can, smelling like one. In what looked like an obvious case of self-snitching, he posted on Twitter, who caught Shaq in the alley with his gout? 051 Melly's next four murders. C-Day was among the 600 members who were involved in the death of Fathead, a 051 member. 051 wanted revenge. They made C-Day their target. After getting out of jail, 051 set up an attempt to kill him. They made him think he would meet someone for a business deal. When C-Day arrived at the meeting point, Melly and two other 051 members jumped from a corner to ambush him. Luckily, C-Day managed to take to his heels. Despite bullets whizzing past him, he was able to get away without injuries. He would be among the lucky people to escape Melly's wrath. OTF Nooski was popular for being Lil Durk's cousin. It is important to note that Nooski was caught in the crossfire as Melly sought revenge for his slain friend and gang member, Mark Campbell, alias Lil Mark. It all started when 051 killed L.A. Capone, one of the 600 members involved in Fathead's death. Lil Mark was standing at a bus stop in the 300 block of East 51st Street. Stuck in traffic was a van with members of O Block, 600, and Folly Boys. The van drove to the location after being given a heads up by another gang member who had spotted Lil Mark. The van stopped next to the 051 members. Twilla from THF and D-Rose from 600 opened fire and quickly drove away. Lil Mark was shot in the head, killing him on the spot. What angered 051 more about the murder was that a few hours later, D. Rose returned to the crime scene and recorded a video mocking Lil Mark. Soon, Lil Durk, 600, THF, and O Block started their mock campaign against Lil Mark and his late brother Tuka, who coincidentally had been shot at a bus stop. Lil Durk later uploaded a video where he recorded himself mocking the dead 051 member at the murder scene. Lil Durk, hey, this, hey, hey, this bus stop right here though, this a real famous place. Melly and 051 were left fuming. Lil Durk became their number one target. It reported that Lil Durk was supplying guns and money to his crew since he was a successful rapper. He was also constantly dissing 051 in his music. 051 hated him for this. There was only one problem. 051 could not get to Lil Durk. He was already a famous artist, which would bring a lot of attention to them. Apart from that, the rapper was rarely in Chicago and was hardly ever outside when he was in the city. Because of this, they decided that the only way to get back at him was to go after those closest to him. OTF Nooski, Lil Durk's cousin, was the first victim. Two months after Lil Mark was killed, 051 got their first revenge. Lil Durk and his cousin were sitting in the car in the 700 block of East 87th Street. Lil Durk exited the vehicle and went into the store to buy some shoes, leaving his cousin in the car alone. As Nooski waited in the driver's seat, Melly and Drilla approached the car's window on both sides and opened fire. Nooski sustained multiple gunshot wounds. However, he managed to start the car and started driving away. However, he did not get far as he crashed the car a few yards away. The shooters ran back to their car and sped away from the crime scene. Lil Durk hurriedly exited the store seconds after he had heard the shots, only to be met with his cousin's dead body covered in blood in the car. This assassination hit home, especially for Durk, who broke down to tears after seeing his dead cousin. The next hit by 051 came months later. This time, it was Uchenna Agina, alias OTF Chino, who was affiliated with THF. Chino also happened to be Lil Durk's manager. 051 were not playing when they decided to go after those closest to Lil Durk. On the 27th of March, 2015, Chino was sitting in a car in the 8400 block of South Stony Island Avenue. Unfortunately for him, he was spotted by an 051 member who alerted his friends. Melly wanted to do this himself. 
For him, it was personal. He wanted Lil Durk to suffer. He walked up to the side of the car that Chino was in and fired multiple times, with one shot hitting his head. Chino was rushed to the Advocate Trinity Hospital in the Calumet Heights neighborhood. He was pronounced dead on arrival. 051 wanted those who killed Lil Mark to have a taste of their own medicine. Just as they had recorded videos and posted disrespectful messages after killing Lil Mark, 051 was determined to do the same. After Chino's death, 051 unleashed a ton of messages and tweets mocking his death. It's safe to say that Melly and 051 had gotten into Lil Durk's head. After the death of his cousin, Lil Durk was out for blood. He wanted Melly's head delivered to him on a plate, figuratively. He didn't hide this fact as he sang about it, saying, For the man that killed my cousin, make sure he dies slow. Melly was just getting started. He was out to punish his ops. Five days after killing Chino, Melly was at it again. That morning, together with other gang members, they drove to the 5800 block of South King Drive in Washington Park, an area controlled by 600. As they drove around, they spotted Lil Boo. Lil Boo was among the founders of 600. They couldn't believe their luck. They were about to score a big hit with Lil Boo. They slowed their car down as they approached him. Unfortunately, Lil Boo saw the car slowing down when it was too late. He tried to hide under a car, but it was all in vain. Melly and his gang of killers had already seen him hide, and they started firing shots at him. Lil Boo sustained multiple gunshots, which killed him on the spot. As had become the norm, 051 gang members rushed to social media to mock Lil Boo's death. Melly was starting to get on his op's nerves. They had had enough of him. It was time to take this menace out. A month after the death of Lil Boo, Melly found himself on the receiving end of a gun. 15-year-old THF Raheem was given the task of eliminating Melly. On the fateful day, Melly, Arrow, and Ario were in the 600 block of South Wentworth Avenue in Inglewood. Young Raheem spotted his ops. Without getting noticed by the trio, he walked towards them and started firing his gun in their direction. Arrow was lucky enough to escape with only a graze wound on his leg. On the other hand, Ariel took a bullet to his right shoulder. Melly was not so lucky. He got hit in his head and foot. Melly and Ariel were rushed to Stronger Hospital. Luckily, they survived the attack. Their attacker, Raheem, had used a 22 caliber Beretta, which did not do much damage. It didn't take long for Melly to get back on the streets seeking revenge. A fortnight after he escaped with his life, he and Ariel took to the streets to catch their next body. Their target, young Raheem. 800 block of East 45th Street, Raheem and 14-year-old THF twin were chilling when they were spotted by their ops. The two teens were not so lucky. Melo and Ariel opened fire on them. Twin was shot in the foot, while Raheem sustained multiple shots to his back. Twin was lucky enough to live. However, this was not the case for his friend. Raheem was killed on the spot. Ariel was arrested and convicted of Raheem's murder. Lucky for Melly, Ariel maintained silence and never snitched on him. 051, last four bodies and death. After Raheem's murder, Melly went silent, especially after Ariel had been arrested for the shooting. Killing a teenage boy had brought a lot of heat with it. However, the gravedigger was back at it one and a half years later. On that day, a member of 051, Bankroll Q, had been gunned down. Word on the street spread quickly that Bankroll Q's killers were Smalls, Lil Dell, Breeze from Folly Boys, and T.Y. from GGE. 12 hours after Bankroll Q was shot dead, Melly was back looking for ops. While in the 8800 block of South Marshfield Avenue, he spotted one of the Folly Boys responsible for Bankroll Q's death, Delvin Weston, alias Lil Dell. Melly drove near his ops and unleashed hell on him. Lil Dell was shot multiple times in his chest. Miraculously, the 18-year-old managed to get himself to Advocate Medical Center. However, this resilience could not carry him any longer. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Unlike his strategy with Lil Durk, Melly would rather go after the people who are directly involved in the gunning down of his fellow gang members. Any sane person would lay low for a couple weeks after getting back on the streets. However, they did not call him the gravedigger for nothing. Only three days after gunning down Lil Dell, Melly went ahead to terrorize THF again. This time, Trevon Dickerson was the target. Melly spotted the THF gang member, Trevon, standing in the 6800 block of South Cornell Avenue. Melly was with two of his fellow 051 crew. They opened fire and shot him multiple times. Trevon got hit in his face and abdomen and died on the spot. Many speculated that Melly had spotted Trevon outside his apartment and decided to trail him. Interestingly, Melly and Trevon lived near each other, so it seemed easy to find and kill him. At the time, Melly had inflicted the most damage on THF more than what was considered normal in gang rivalry. In most cases, one would take out three members from the same set. However, Melly had taken way more than enough lives. THS wanted him gone immediately. Melly was proving too slippery and too smart for his ops. However, that would soon change.
The first attempt on his life had been weak since he was able to recover quickly. If the ops were going to take him out, they had to bring out the big guns. This is important to remember that the late Raheem was stepson to Beizou. When Raheem was killed, his stepdad was in jail. Now a free man, Beizou was out for revenge. He joined everyone else who wanted Melly's head on a stick. One day, in early 2018, Melly and his friend Crump stood outside a party in the 6800 block of South Morgan Street. Suddenly, a car suspiciously slowed down close to them. Without warning, Beizou and two other shooters opened fire on the two. In under a minute, the car had sped off. Crump sustained four gunshot wounds, two in the torso and two in the arm. On the other hand, Melly had taken five shots to his left arm and his head had been grazed by a bullet. The two victims were rushed to the University of Chicago Hospital. While Crump was later pronounced dead, Melly, once again, miraculously survived the ordeal. Twice they had tried to take him out. Twice he had come out with his life. Not only was Melly proving hard to track down, but he had also become extremely difficult to kill and his ops were becoming frustrated. Seeing Crump get gunned down in front of his eyes reignited Melly's thirst for revenge against Lil Durk and OTF. Word on the street was that Lil Durk had put a bounty on Melly's head, which was one reason Beizu had tried to take him out. That is, of course, adding to the fact that Melly had killed his teen stepson. Before he continued terrorizing Lil Durk, he decided to first punish one of the perpetrators of Bankroll Q's death. The next target was Tyrone Marshall, alias T.Y. The 19-year-old was caught lacking by Melly. He was leaning against a parked car. As he and a friend chatted away, they failed to notice a vehicle slowly approaching them. The car stopped a few yards away, and Melly's gun emerged from its lowered window. Melly opened fire and did not miss his target. He had struck T.Y. in the head before speeding away from the crime scene. This was yet another body under his belt. His reputation as the gravedigger had now stuck. Everyone he went after was finding their way to the grave, and he was not done yet. He was back to deal with Lil Durk and OTF. His next target, anyone close to Lil Durk. As mentioned earlier, Crump's death had reignited Melly's thirst for his op's blood. He was back on Lil Durk's case. This time, he wanted to hit him where it hurts most. His next target was Lil Durk's blood brother, D-Thang. While the other two victims, Lil Durk's cousin and manager, hurt the rapper, this would have completely devastated him. Lil Durk's cousin, Baby D, was also included in the proposed hit list. One night in the 600 block of East 115th Street in the Pullman neighborhood, Baby D Thang and OTF Fresh sat in a parked car chilling. Unknown to them was that they had been trailed from the nightclub that they had visited hours earlier. The gravedigger and a few other accomplices pulled up on them. Before anyone in the parked car could react, they were sprayed with bullets and left to die. All three occupants in the car were hit. They were rushed to University of Chicago Medical Center. One of them sustained a fatal wound. OTF Fresh was the luckiest of the trio. He had sustained a bullet to his left knee and was quickly discharged from the hospital. Lil Durk's brother D-Thang had been shot multiple times in the legs and abdomen. He was in critical condition when he arrived at the hospital. Luckily, he survived the ordeal and was discharged days later. However, Lil Durk's cousin was not so lucky. 30-year-old Darnell Banks, alias Baby D, had sustained multiple gunshot wounds to his back and abdomen. He died while receiving treatment at the hospital. The news was devastating to Lil Durk. This was the second family member killed. And to make matters worse, his brother was in the hospital with gunshot wounds. Melly may have just crossed the line. Enough was enough. Something had to be done. After the hit on Baby D, several gangs were out looking for the gravedigger every day. They included THF, Lamron, and 600. While he was proving difficult to get, there was no doubt that his day would come as the popular saying goes, every dog has his day. September 1st, 2019. Melly decided to attend a house party. This would prove to be the biggest mistake of his life. The house was at 6107 St. Lawrence on the south side of Chicago. This part was controlled by the Gyro City Gang. When he arrived at the party, Nate, a member of Taekwon World, spotted him. At that time, Taekwon World and 051 were not enemies. In fact, a few weeks earlier, Melly and Nate were shooting dice together. However, the game ended with a bitter disagreement. A few days after shooting dice, Melly would show up at Nate's house and shoot at it. Nate's girlfriend and newborn were in the house at the time. The sight of Melly made Nate's blood boil. He pretended to leave the party. However, he turned around, whipped out his gun, and fired in Melly's direction before fleeing through the back door. He did not miss. Melly was shot in the chest, groin, and abdomen. The gravedigger died on the spot. He died exactly how he ended many people's lives. His death led to the creation of Melly Way, an alliance between 051, 757, and Geo Drive. Word on the street is that Melly Way members patiently await Nate's release from prison to get revenge. And that is the story of the Gravedigger, Chirac's deadliest shooter. If you enjoyed watching this video, click on one of the boxes playing on your screen to watch more similar content.